Man. It was uh, 1991, I believe, around that time. And Snoop was hanging out with Warren G and all those guys and hanging around with Dre whenever they could to hang around in WA. And Tupac was doing working with a Bud of Law. And Dre, Bud of Law, all of them all hung out. So Snoop, who was a fan of Tupac, he loved, you know, loved him and Juice and all this stuff. And and Pac was just really for the digital underground doing their thing. They was just trying to come up and impress. And he did his little freestyle in front of Pac. You know, just the S, the S I'm fresh, the N I'm O, O, double O P, D O, D O, double G, Y, D O, G. You see, he used to always throw that in all his rhymes, you know, when he freestyled. And, you know, Pac was freestyling with him and, you know, just spitting off the top of their dome. And that's how Pac rapped. And they ended up, him and Money B was out there and they ended up doing Call It Out You Want with a butt of law. And they shot the video out there. So that's how he knew who Snoop was. But then next thing you know, Snoop come up on the Deep Cover song. And then from Deep Cover, we know the history. You know, they blow up. Now, Pac is recording his third album at this point, right? Death Row and all them is in, in the prominence. They blowing up, doing their thing, just getting started. Uh, the, you know, the chronic does and go where no album is supposed to be and for rap period, it just took off, broke the spectrum. So Pac's third album is getting ready to come out. And it sounds too East Coast. One of the studio executives said, cause Tupac had way too many songs and they were like, this is too many songs. And he's he's like, what do you mean? Well, pick the ones you want to use and, you know, let's get the album going. But but that's what it was, Thug Style. The whole album Thug Style had about 16 songs. Plus some that they wanted to trim down. They trimmed it down to like 12. Uh, Hellraiser was on there. Well, we all, Are You Still Down? That was... Do For Love was on there. All these songs was on there. They just didn't get the clearances for them at the time. But Do For Love was going to be on there and all these other songs. For Are You Still Down? Now, Tupac was like ready to go with the album. Um, then this case hit and he had all these other songs he was working on because he got this rape case coming and this and that. So they was like, we need to get an album that's going to sell. Period. You know, like, we need to get this. We need some songs. That's going, like, Dear Mama and all these songs. He made an introspective album. The Me Against the World album. He wanted to show people, like, like they wanted to take the, the photo shoot they did was to show, look, I'm not an animal. I'm an artist, you know, I'm Tupac Shakur. You know, I'm a person, you know, so they wanted to make him look as civil as possible, but he could not put out thug style when he's going on trial. That album would have, he was convicted as soon as they heard a lyric off that album. They'd be like, see, he's a thug, he's a hootlum. So you come out with Me Against the World. That's a whole different type of album. But what also ticked him off was that while he was locked up and his album didn't release and all this stuff. And you see, you see uh, he had not the Me Against the World album, but the Thug, Thug style album, he had said, he was talking to them and they was like, yo, tell Pac what's up, man. Tell him we listening to his album, man. One of the guys, the people at the studio decided to play the Stug style album to Snoop and then while they were in the studio. 
And that put him in a whole different mindset of, he didn't like that, that the studio would do that. And then he felt like they were taking stuff that he was saying on his album and using it for their records. And he didn't like it, you know? So from that point on, they were still cool, you know? Pac got out, did some things. Because at this point, he was in jail for something else. This is not even the, I don't even think that was the rape case he went in there for. So I think this when he came out spitting and doing all this stuff. But once he went in for the rape case and he was really in there for and did Dear Mama and all this, Snoop then was blowing up. Uh, he had did the um, murder was the case. He had the one little scene in there because he was having crazy legal problems and, and Shook wanted him on death row. But he was like, nah, I can't come over there, Shook. Y'all got too many stars. So too many stars over there. And he was talking about Snoop and Dre. So he couldn't come there and be behind them. He he would have to be the main focal point. He couldn't come there and just be a member. That's not how Pac is. His energy level wouldn't take it. So that's why he didn't join the first time. Um, after he got shot in New York and they sent him that vest and they was trying to get him to come over, he still wasn't trying to go to death row. That was like a last resort and the last resort type move. Once he went there, because Interscope still owned like his contract and Pac still had some of his publishing, but <clears throat> the thing was, Snoop didn't realize that he was going through a trial too for his life. Like Snoop was up for murder. You know, this was a trial. Him and his bodyguard is up for a trial. To, and uh, they call him in self-defense. And Snoop at this time, if Doggy Style didn't hit, let's say Doggy Style just came out and did maybe 500,000 sales. Snoop is probably going to jail. If that album had flopped, he was going to jail for a long time. Now, the success of that album was dictating the trial. They kept pushing it, you know, really milking this thing up, pushing it back because so Snoop can go out and do his work. And once Snoop was the biggest artist in the world, now you got the biggest rap artist in the world on trial. So now it's like, man, they got Snoop on trial for murder. And his trial was very expensive. But Interscope paid for this trial and paid for this lawyer on retainer. And Snoop was shown an account of how much he was down. So when he's, he wasn't even signed yet. And that's how Def Jam almost came in and stole Snoop. And signed him under the, you know, under the radar because he wasn't even featured. I mean, he's just a featured artist. He wasn't signed. So they ended up doing a deal with Death Row, but he owed all this back money. So he ended up signing away most of his publishing, if not all of it. Because he didn't know what it was. He was just like, we'll pay you, you know, for your publishing rights this amount of money. And he was like, bet. So he didn't even realize, though, he was being taken care of, like keeping him out of the red tax wise, giving him cars, giving him houses, but it's not in his name. All these things was keeping him out of the red and tax wise. But financially, he don't have anything to really show for it. And if they turn to the books, they'd be like, look, you have basically nothing coming in off your publishing. Because your rights would have to go to here because you owed so much money for the trial. And he ain't like that. <laughs> so he was quite bitter and wanted to leave death row. He didn't like the situation, but he knew he needed them to pay for the trial. So he had to keep his mouth shut. Now Tupac comes into the equation. Tupac gets the red carpet treatment when he walks through the door. Snoop didn't get this treatment when he walked in. But Snoop was 
just beaten the trial. He was in a whole different mind state. So when Tupac came over, his whole energy level was different. You know, he had just got off of the trial, <laughs> you know, like, like I just finished this trial, you know, this is the first time people gonna hear Snoop basically since the trial was acquitted. And so when you hear two of America's most wanted with him as, you know, Pac, you, you listen to the energy levels, you know, Snoop is sound like a man that went through something. You know, Pac is sounding like somebody who's hungry, that wanted, you know, he want the spot. And that was really the change in the guard. But Pac came in as alpha as he is and just took over. And Snoop kind of didn't like it. He wanted, you know, everybody's supposed to be anticipating the next Snoop out, which they was. So when the Dog Father album was coming up, because what he wanted to do was make a movie called Corleone's Revenge. And he wanted to be like Don Corleone. He the Dog Father. He was going to be Dog Corleone. You know, like that was the the thing that they were supposed to be doing, making this mob, like this mob movie, like they the mob. So when you see America's Most Wanted, it's set up like that when they got the round table where everybody's sitting there at the table and and they wanted to do these like mini movies he's like i'm gonna do it like i ain't gonna be dog coleon it's gonna be coleon's revenge and he won he had all these ideas he wanted to do he had dre on there and and but the dog father album didn't do what it was supposed to do for death row and Pac was gone so he he was no longer going to be in the movie and all this stuff but when they had heat with mob deep and everything tupac came out he inherited that beef for snoop and in the dog pal then when they had the fight over in cabo whatever they was at when him and corrupt got into it and then corrupt ended up leaving death row you know, and the way Suge and Pac was always around each other, it just wasn't a good thing. Now, remember the House of Blues? The House of Blues, that was supposed to be the announcement of Snoop's new record, The Dog Father. You was going to hear the song, the first lead song of the new album. That's what the whole celebration was about. Pac was basically there as the opening act. You know, like he was, it was a death row thing. Snoop was going to close the show out. Then in the end, they pulled, come out and do America's Most Wanted. Tupac stole the show. People wanted to come there to see Tupac. Pac took over the House of Blues. He went first and took it over. Snoop and them did they thing with the dog pound. Don't get me wrong. They they rep, but people wanted to see Pac. They wanted to hear hit them up. The energy of that crowd, that's all they wanted to hear. Play me some hit him up. That's what they want to hear. Sure enough. They did hit them up. You know, we all got the DVD. But that was supposed to be about Snoop. More than anything, it was like, this going to be more about Snoop. It ended up being a, just a death row night. But still, it was more, more of a Pac show than it was anything else. And now they'd be like Tupac live at the House of Blues. Like, Snoop ain't even on it. <laughs> like, he just not even there. You know, but he became bigger than life. But that's not what got Snoop. Snoop felt, I'm in the box now because financially, this war and put us in a hole. East Coast ain't dealing with us. Only people dealing with us really is the West Coast. So we made enemies with a lot of people now. This is going to blow back. It's going to be heavy. 
when people over there used to mess with us, now they really ain't dealing with us. Snoop is trying to mend, mend the wounds. Now, when he went on radio trying to tell people on the East Coast, like, no, 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 we got love for the East, and that, and I ain't got, I ain't got no problem with Puffy and all them. That really rubbed, that really rubbed Pac the wrong way. And the reason why they was, you know, had to still do their job, and Pac just wasn't talking to him really. He was disgusted. And he was like, I inherited that mob deep beef for you. And when it's on me, you like, I ain't got, that's his thing. And I feel like they need to talk that out. And I didn't wrote, I would, I didn't even know what the detail was. Like they got beef with Death Row. They got beef with all of us. I inherited that. So he felt betrayed by Snoop. But Snoop whole thing with, with Pac was, he was upset and not mostly because of the fame and all that. He was mad about his money, his publishing. He was really upset how Tupac was able to keep his publishing and how he's like, I, I helped build this place, but I can't get mine and Tupac can get his. He just got here. He Tupac can get it, you know, and but I can't. You know, that's just that ain't right. So his beef wasn't really with Tupac personally. But with Suge and Death Row, he's mad because he wants something, but he signed it away. And he was like, man, we young, you know, we don't understand like no publishings and what that stuff means. And when we young, you just want to get on. But that's a mistake that you got to learn not to make. So. All I could tell you is that situation played a big part and you could see it in, in Snoop's reaction. You could see it in his face when he was with Pac. You could see it. He wasn't happy. He wasn't happy. It was like he was playing second fiddle. I'm not saying he had no love for Pac. I ain't saying that, but he, he didn't like the situation. He knew Pac and Suge were mad type. And, you know, the death row, they were kind of, the dog pound and all them, they were kind of, we don't really mess with them or, you know, blend in together like that. But when Pac first got there and before all that, he was cool with Daz and all them and corrupt and he was rolling with them. So it's like when Snoop and Suge brought them in and brought them all the way in and embraced them, you know, that, that became less and less. But Daz will have his stuff ready to go because that's how he got to get so many songs with Pac. Because Pac would be ready to go. And if you're ready to hit it, and Daz is like, okay, I'm going to get with you. Let's go. Let's hit it. Let's hit it. Let's hit it. So when he kept doing that over and over and over again, let's hit it. Let's hit it. And they kept hitting the songs. You start seeing all these songs, all these hits. That's how Daz had all them reels. But Daz, uh, I told you how he lost them reels. So that's that. But all of this came down to publishing. Snoop Dogg was bitter over this publishing more than anything. So when his second album didn't hit and they decided we ain't finna make no movie called no Corleone's Revenge, the, the money, the label, like, we ain't, we ain't doing that. We ain't doing that. Suge ain't around. Um, Reggie's running things and they cutting people's money and budgets, you know, and people running around trying to do stuff. The Justice Department trying to shut them down and people coming for publishings and masters and it was a big circus at the time, so. It became one big mess, but that's the root of the problem, publishing. And we know the rest.
Don't forget to click the subscription button. I'm out.